Okay. This is a uh, cash flow plug exercise. It's almost too easy for you. And it's, it's got some simplifications, but I decided to uh, to make a video for it, and it shouldn't take that long. It's kind of one of these old ones I made where I try to get fancy, and this is a user formed out show. I'll put that in, in uh, macro videos, perhaps. They're not they're not very difficult to. Uh, they're really easy to make. Okay, and then what I did, and this is the way the old exercises used to work. You press clear, and, it, and you press compute, and it does everything for you. So the idea is kind of to uh, just test it out. I can't imagine anybody doing that, okay? But I'll leave this here. Now, I put a, a sensitivity factor. And then the other thing, I hope I put one of these things where I put a lot of uh, these are just data validations. You just go to data validation and it's the, what is it, data, data validation, and then you click on the, the input message. It's kind of like a way to make a little comment that you just hit when you get on a sheet. So I think I started with a cash flow. So we put an EBITDA and we made it negative. So I hope you'll be borrowing some money. I put a sensitivity factor in, and look, the old days I would make range names. I don't do that anymore. And I, oh, uh oh. Just press Shift Control R without, uh, let's see if it still works. Now, uh, this one, ah, this is kind of horrible, really. The profit and loss statement should have been below this, but I'm not going to go and change anything. So, we can go down and get the interest expense. Now the interest expense, as you might know, and then we'll get the interest income. Okay, uh, shift control R. I'm using the positive number convention, which means I'll state these things as positive and subtract the interest expense and add the interest income, shift control R. Then uh, I'm just going to say, well, our cash flow equals our net income. Why is that? We have no depreciation. We're like a retail, my uncle's handbag uh, business. He only really has inventories, which is a really big deal for him. Now, what we do is we start with the balance sheet. So I'll start with our surplus cash. Is that right? No, it's a surplus cash, less overdrafts, excuse me. So this is kind of a really simple way to do it, but it, it, it works. Surplus cash minus overdrafts. It's almost like a uh, opposite of net debt. So we can put this one here. And then we're going to go to the cash flow statement. This cash flow statement should have been below. I'm a little bit embarrassed. Alt equal. You know, if you wanted to do it like this, Shift Control R, you can press Alt equal uh, here. Did that work? Oops. Hmm. Does this work? Alt equal. There we go. Okay. And then what we can do is split this into surplus cash. So what we'll do is something so simple, and later we're going to put a minimum cash balancing, which turns out to be really kind of a little bit of a tricky, tricky thing. So I'm going to use the maximum of this of zero. So if, it, if that combination is positive, then we say we have cash on the balance sheet. Oops, shift control R. And then we'll put in our interest income rate. And this is a little bit repetitive. Where in the, Where is the interest income rate? Oh, come on. Oh, there it is. You know, I suppose what we really... Oh, I'm going to just put it here. What did I do? Did I make it a range name? Um, okay. And then we shift control R. And then we need to do this on the opening balance, not the closing balance. So we can go to the prior year and then get our interest income. That's to avoid the circular reference. 
I think the circular reference is a really big deal. And then we can do the same sort of thing. Let's start with our balance sheet. Another theme that keeps coming back in corporate models. Always start with a balance sheet. And then we put the maximum. And let's put a minus of the closing balance or zero. This is kind of, even though it's ridiculously simple, it's in a way got some of the same issues as a... Uh, as a cash flow waterfall with all kind of complexities. So then we put in interest income, and again, let's multiply this by the opening balance. Hi. Hello. Are you here? A nurse just came in the room. I, I don't know if you heard her. Shift control R. So we have that. And then we can do almost the same thing. Let's start with the balance sheet. God, I got another phone call. I'm going to have to stop this. Okay, I'm continuing. I hope I, now let's make the equity balance, let's make the opening balance equal to the closing balance. Whoops. It's kind of mistakes that drive me nuts. And then let's make the net income. Whoops. And I think I put no dividends. So we just press alternate equal, I hope. Why am I alternate equal? Isn't, you know. Oh, okay, it really, uh, I wanted to show you a better thing about the alternate equal. Now we, uh, I think I just put the fixed assets just to demonstrate another uh, balance sheet. We didn't have any capex, so I think those just stay the same. Our surplus cash comes from just upstairs. Where is the surplus cash? The closing balance of the surplus cash. And then, can I press... What you can do here, this doesn't work out with test. Uh, all equal, okay? Shift control one. All right, and then our overdrafts are the closing balance. This maybe, maybe it wasn't such a bad exercise after all. Whoops. Shift control one, and then we put our equity balance, okay? And let's see the magic. Uh, whoops. Okay, let's do that again. Shift control right arrow, alt equals. Ha! <laughs> That's not so good. Why doesn't our balance sheet balance even in the first year? I didn't put any surplus cash. I was supposed to start with surplus cash from the balance sheet and not put the uh, minimum and maximum. That's kind of one of the basic rules. And then we're balancing, okay, and we can put our little test that this equals zero, shift control R, and then we can even have an overall check, and can you click, let's see if you can click on this entire line, there we go, and then if we want to make a little graph of this, how about this, let's select this, and then press our wonderful little uh, F11 button. Whoops. <laughs> I, you know, I have this new computer. I hate it because I can't get the function buttons properly. And I couldn't figure out. So this is our, uh, this is the cash balance and the overdraft. And, you know, what I had thought you could do is take, uh, take this and put it on the title of the chart. So, whoops, that's what I did last time. Is this the one we just made? So we put an equal sign and we just go to our uh, exercise. And the rule for making a graph, the simple rule, it's got to be on one line, number one. And number two, I kind of cheated for you. If you would do this one, uh, there were two things. We had to do it in two steps. We can't put percentages in. And look at this. Oh, I made the classic worst error of all time. Okay, go back here, and then we click on this one. I hope this is going to work. So we can put our little uh, box here, and then you can uh, copy this to our nice little chart and see what happens to your cash balance and your debt. Let's put the, the, the 
<sighs> Oops, if we put this low enough, then we'll get a whole lot of debt. Okay, that's our basic uh, corporate model. Okay, maybe that wasn't such a bad exercise. No. And of course, oh, I need to make my advertisement. Um, if you want a course, and we'll do a lot more things, advanced things than this, I hope. But if you go to finance, energy, finance, energy, institute.com, then you can, uh, okay, you can uh, look for very reasonably priced classes. And I, uh, in corporate finance or project finance, and all of this. Okay, I'm not even going to save this file because, you know, you can clear it and do the whole macro a little bit. And I think that's 11 minutes. It took me 11 minutes to make that model way too long. I was blabbering a lot too long.